You don't need to be sitting there watching your 401k or watching your long-term portfolio bleed. Take, you know, take uh, proactive action. You don't need, this is a 1972. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is healthy and happy uh, and joy and full of life. Don't let the market, right? Don't let the market dictate uh, who you are. Uh, don't let the market dictate uh, what you want to achieve in life or just your overall happiness. It's just the ends of me. You know, all of us have been doing this for a very, very long time, kind of know that uh, the hard way, okay? Uh, and, you know, years ago, and I, I'm always the first one to, to admit it, you know, during the, you know, the dot-com era, we got lucky, okay? All, none of my friends will ever admit this, but I admitted this to myself like, years and years ago. We got lucky, right? We knew nothing. We knew absolutely nothing. Uh, we were in the right place at the right time uh, during the greatest market of all time. And I know some of you guys have been uh, in this market in the last five years, it's been really, really strong for the bulls, but there's not, there's been nothing like the internet craze. And we got very, very lucky. And um, what, what happened next, we weren't prepared for, okay? We weren't prepared for uh, the two-year market after 9-11. Um, you know, we weren't prepared for uh, the 2007, 2008 spilling over into 2009 mortgage crisis. But then we finally started putting things together. And it, it really did take me, you know, it, it really took me probably about, 10 to 12 years to finally kind of get it. So very, very, really small uh, measures of kind of what to get it. And most of it was because I was never experienced, you know, I was never exposed to it. It was, you know, experience is time, right? Time is experience. And when you've never experienced uh, one side of the market, it's always been by the dip, by the dip of bulls, you know, the bears will never learn. And this, that, the other thing that you hear on social media sensationalized, you start to believe it. You start to, you know, you start to kind of sip your own Kool-Aid and eventually, and hopefully this wasn't happen, but eventually you start to see the, the, the reality, the harsh reality that there's both sides of this coin, right? There really is. And the market was very, very aggressive in 2001, was very, very aggressive in uh, 2007, 2008, with the almost uh, obliteration of stock prices and the whole global economy. But we got through it, right? We got through it. We got through it much more smarter, uh, much more mature. We A lot of us grew up. Uh, very, very quickly. But again, we were more comfortable in our own skin because we already had a decade into this game. And a lot of traders, they believe that if they can't figure out in the first two, three years, it's a waste of time. It's, it's nonsense. You know, two, three years, you, you guys are babies, right? Uh, first thing about it, first three years of your life, what are you doing? You're walking, you're feeding yourself, you might be wiping your own ass, I don't know, right? So think about the, the first three years of a trader's career. You're trying to figure out what the difference between a bid and offer is, right? You wanna know the difference uh, between a closing place. Some people don't know what, what red to green or green to, to red is. So you're just trying to just get as much information as possible and you're just trying to kind of make it to the next day. In the bullish market, the most ravenous, savage bull market is very, very tough for a new trader because again, they've never experienced it. So when something like this comes around, it's kind of like the end of the world and everybody uh, goes into this fetal position and underneath their desk and they start praying to God and, and you know, it, it's been two weeks, right? It's been literally two weeks. Try to go from 2001 to 2003 and not making a dime. Try to go from 2007 to 2009, hoping that number one will have a stock market left to trade, but you don't know where your next dollar is going to come from because you've never seen a potential Armageddon effect of the stock market, right? So here we are, right? And when you look at the market from a long-term trend, and we started talking about this uh, last night in the video, here's the monthly chart, right? And, you know, we, we've been seeing for the last several years is all this. And again, if I would have turned to anybody, even the most novice trader and say, well, what is this? I mean, does this look really bearish to you? They would turn around and say, no, how can it be bearish? We had this big, big run. We had this move back into rising support. And just like all the times, right, we're going to bounce back. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But from the outside, it doesn't look that bad. When it turns bad is when we start closing below this trend line. This trend line got saved a little bit, adjusted basis on the close. But when you look at the cues, right? When you look at the cues from the daily basis, there's literally one area left before this goes from 
kind of like, ha, 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 you know, a little bit of a back test. Let's just wait it out to ha, ha, ha. The, the whole two year trend that started in October 2020 has been broken. And now what? Right. And now what? And now all of a sudden there are no breakouts. There are no uh, stocks that are going higher on upgrades. Every piece of good news is being sold. Welcome to 2001. Welcome to 2007. Welcome to 2008. Where we are right now in 2022 is to be determined. But that's OK. Right, guys, that, that's OK. Just just take a deep breath. Understand this. For me, I'm on year 23. You could be on month 23. You could be on 23 weeks. You haven't experienced, which is a good thing, uh, what a lot of us that started in the late 90s, early 2000s have. And there's a lot of torture in between. And hopefully there's so much information and hopefully so many good people in your corner that they could kind of guide you through this, right? There's no arrogance involved. There's no, you know, there is no, um, you know, you're an idiot. This one's an idiot. The stock market's going to go low. No, it's just, it's, it's all about a structural balance passing on some of your experience. And that's the difference, right? The difference between 23 weeks and 23 years is all the these years, all these scenarios, all these bear markets, all these bear cycles, 9-11, pandemics, this, that, the other thing, and now we're here. The only difference is I finally have a clue what the hell I'm doing year 23, not not month 23, but year 23. And now there are no surprises because I've seen this movie before. We've seen the worst case scenarios before. We've seen the towers go down. We've seen the financial crisis take down pillars of financial institutions. So excuse me if two weeks in January is not freaking anybody out. And that's the most important part. The level heads will prevail. More important than that is where we are technically. And that's kind of where we want to start the day. If we talked about last night, we talked about uh, we talked about Nvidia. We talked about uh, you talked about the home builders. Uh, Apple started getting a little heavier, and today what we saw was another pretty aggressive case of sell. Right, January of 2022. At least the first 19 days on the calendar calendar have been incredibly aggressive to the downside. Again, you got another one uh, percent down for the S and P for. Uh, for the Dow, that NASDAQ 100 going down one, another 1.2%. The Russell that we talked about yesterday, the IWM went down another 1.6%. But more important is not what happened the first 19 days, it's what's happening next. And that's the most important part. And his, this is kind of where we are in this do or die scenario. And, you know, look, is it possible we gap down tomorrow? reverse course and kind of have a, you know, have a rally back. Yeah, of course, of course, it's absolutely possible. But when you look at the, the charts tonight and you go through your all your due diligence, you're going to see, man, that if we start losing this bottom of the channel here, we're going to have some phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal value. If you thought the moves were really good today, and we'll get to uh, the pivots in a second. Now we're starting to get into a macro point of view, a wider range of more stocks starting to take down uh, macro cycles. And this is where everything could start getting very, very aggressive. Again, I'm not talking about, you know, and I'm not saying this from the, you know, from the whole fear monger point of view. I'm, I'm, you know, you guys have eyes just like everybody else. You could just see it. You could see where important areas of the market is, where important support is. And if, if they break those levels, whether it's your individual stock or macro ETF, then, then price action probably will follow soon thereafter. So if you're a practical human being, a sensible human being that has common sense, you know, again, you don't need to be a victim of this market. Again, there's two sides of the market to trade. And I know some of you guys are, are longer term investors and, and hopefully you'll be okay, right? Because if we do close below this whole macro channel, you know, you'll see. I mean, unfortunately, you'll probably see what I'm talking about. Hopefully it doesn't get there. Hopefully the market holds tomorrow. But if it doesn't, you know, you don't need to be a victim. If you have a long, aggressive portfolio, you know, take advantage of the information you know. Start hedging your portfolio. If you're heavily invested in technology, so maybe start shorting some cues against your against your inventory, against your book. Again, you don't need to be sitting there watching your 401k or watching your long-term portfolio bleed. Take you know, take uh, proactive action. You don't need this. Isn't 1972 that there's no information out there? There's plenty of information out there. So be an adult. You know, manage your active portfolio the same way you would you would manage it if the market was screaming higher. And again, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Like I say every single video, we're planning on what we think is going to happen tomorrow. We'll get we'll get to individual pivots in a second and then some of the setups, but we don't know what's going to happen. But if you are in this business for only a couple of years, guys, just relax. I'm telling you, relax. It's not that bad. You have really, hopefully you have really good people in your corner that have experience, that have a cool 
uh, head on their shoulders that number one, understand the dynamics that stocks do go up, which we've seen uh, very, very aggressively in the last several years. And potentially they can go down as well. And the difference again between 2001 versus 2022, at least I've seen the movie before. I know how it kind of ends. The most important part is figuring out and trying to capitalize uh, what's in between. And that's kind of what we try to do uh, every single day. Do I have the answers for everything? Absolutely not. I'm wrong. I'm wrong a lot. I'm wrong in my opinion. But as long as my opinion doesn't play out as being a mule and being very, very pigheaded in a price action, I'm okay with that. And that's kind of what we talked about. You know, we talked about last night, I was waiting for the sell side bias. And that's the first thing I said this morning. You know, I, I said, look, the biggest issue, biggest issue we had was we've been seeing really, really aggressive gaps all over the place up 200, down 200. And what that's been doing is it's been completely destroying some of these setups over and over and over again. So when we gapped up today uh, today in the morning, uh, based on the, my research from last night, which I was you know pretty much all sell bias, I said, look, I'm gonna give the bears every opportunity to seize control for the first candles of the day. Stay patient. I, I wanted to buy nothing. There's this absolutely zero you wanna buy when stocks had a big move down the previous day and they're gapping up in the supply. And we talk about this constantly. If you've been watching this video over and over and over again, the worst thing you could possibly do after a big declining engulfing candle that we saw yesterday is buy stocks at the open. You're gonna be stuffed at supply 99% of the time. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened to a lot of traders today. We reversed course, we were sitting there patient. Like my, my patience level right now is like statuesque. I'm like a statue right now. I, I, I can literally wait all day for these things. And finally around 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, it's it was like Moses parting the Red Seas. Uh, everything went, I mean, everything started getting red. A macro channel in the queues got busted. And next thing we know, we had a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, session back to the downside. And now we're setting up for tomorrow. So let's talk about this. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday, 262 was obviously a big number uh, on the video. We talked about last night's video, how big that 256 level was. 256 is a macro pivot. If it confirms, it could get down to 245 potential. Uh, here was NVIDIA. Didn't get it quite down to uh, 245, but it took out the 256, closed right at the lows of 250. If this thing gaps up tomorrow and they start reclaiming today's channels, you could see 245, 240, depending on what we see with the overall market. So really good move on NVIDIA. Rivian continues to be really good. Uh, yesterday, you had the 77, 75 macro area fall. Uh, I said we could see 65. Confirm yesterday's macro. Green to red on watch. Watch for yesterday's low, 72.85 can flush to the lows. The stock is trading right now, 69 after hours. Really great move. I still think there's a shot, guys. Everybody should be down to, you know, 10, 15% of the runner right now. But I do believe, I think we, there's a shot if the market continues to go low, we could see 65, 60 within the next couple of days, especially uh, if the market continues to move lower. Uh, Spotify, I, I, I had zero interest in Spotify, way too thin for me. Uh, Spotify experienced traders, watch this move here, 209, 50, 209. Uh, it went down to like the 206s. I still think it probably goes lower with the rest of the market, but just uh, it's not for me. Uh, here's again, here's where, where we talked about in last night's video, the double bottom 369. If it goes red, that line in the sand potential could flush. And they killed the market, right? Especially in the afternoon, they killed the market. Here was the 269 level. Uh, they flushed the down, trading 366 right now. Again, this whole 365 level is either going to be defended tomorrow, we're gonna to rally back, or if this thing closes below 365 again, We'll talk about that uh, on the weekend update. Keep in mind, tomorrow is Thursday. I, that's my normal uh, Thursday night off, so there is no uh, video. We'll, we'll, next video, you guys, will see is on uh, on the weekend. But again, big, big move on the queues to the downside as well. Uh, Airbnb never, never confirmed. I still like it, guys. Watch this 152 tomorrow on Airbnb. Uh, you know, I think I up upgraded today. Who gives a crap? Uh, you know, this thing starts taking out this whole bottom channel. Uh, maybe sees macro area to the downside. Uh, so that one never confirmed. Lennar, we talked about the home builders last night. Uh, Lennar got downgraded today. Macro support, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Lennar. We talked about the home builders last night, right? Here's Lennar, went to 96. Uh, DWAC obviously never got down, never got up to the 94 level. Uh, Apple 169, 2169. If it builds below, can flush. 
Here's Apple. Apple got smoked again today. Smoked first close today below the 50 day moving average. This 50 day gets confirmed tomorrow. This thing's going uh, to 164. Uh, Tesla 1013 huge macro area, excuse me, huge spot support. If it builds below can flush. Here's 1013 on Tesla, right? You kind of get the picture here. It's 1013 on Tesla. Uh, close right at the lows, 995. Watch for this next macro 80, uh, macro area going on the January 10th lows. Again, it could get there, especially if the market is weak. Uh, take on the way down, take on the way down, blah, 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 and the video gets smoked. So we're set up for tomorrow, guys. You don't have to be uh, very, very creative. Go through the NASDAQ 100. Amazon looks like on death's door. Uh, NVIDIA looks terrible. You know, Even though Tesla's not there yet at macro, it's very, very close to there as well. Uh, Rivian, Rivian still looks like four or five points down. Amazon, uh, Apple, first close below the 50-day moving average. Go through the NASDAQ 100. It'll take you five minutes. You'll get super value for tomorrow if you put in just a little bit of work uh, tonight. So guys, again, if you're a brand new trader, just relax. I know it seems scary. Uh, I know it seems like it's never gonna end. It's only been two weeks, right? Try trading a market like this for two years, then you really start to appreciate uh, what this is, but more important, what this is. And so take a deep breath, guys. Again, find that positive influence, cool and cool essence in your life with a cool head. It could give you some experience, give, give you some good advice, but the most important thing is stay in business. Guys, God bless. Have a great night. I will see you all tomorrow.